we now take Mid-American Conference predictions to Miami of Ohio. The Red Hawks entering 2023 uh, uh, have always been a, a team that is sitting towards the top level of the Mid-American Conference. It could be hard to do so this year, however. Yes, you have a returning quarterback who could be one of the best in the entire conference. However, when you take a look at what else is around, there are some key contributors leaving offensively, especially in the wide receiver position and on defense as well. However, there are enough pieces here for this team to be a really, really good and competitive unit in the Mid-American Conference. So can Miami of Ohio take some steps forward and jump right back into the Mid-American Conference championship game? Or is this going to be a team that may even start to slide back down the standings board in 2023? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel, Preview and predicting all 133 FBS-level college football teams. We're almost done with that. We got the rest of the MAC and Conference USA left, but I have a video up for every other team. So hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, so you you can also hear my thoughts uh, during the season as well. But there are more ways than that. You can help me support my channel. Watching the videos, one of them. You can also like, comment, share, and anything else you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel. Uh, as now, we are very close to the college football season. We're just wrapping up predictions. Miami of Ohio is next. Before we talk about the Red Hawks, though, we got to know how we do things around here. We're going to go through a roster overview and look at who the team lost, who's coming back, and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class while well, taking a look at the Red Hawk football schedule. And we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Miami of Ohio here in 2023. Again, as I said earlier, Brett Gabbert is back. Now, what I didn't mention is he it ha had been dealing with some injuries last season. I believe he only played in four or so games, uh, but in them was really spectacular. 816 yards on around 65% completion percentage, four touchdowns, no interceptions. And just to give you an idea of sample size, threw 115 passes last season. So it's not like he played nothing again, did play some, but with a fully healthy Brett Gabbert this year, Miami of Ohio is going to have a pretty solid offense. Now, the leading passer last year was Avion Smith, and he also performed pretty well. Uh, now, was under 50% completion percentage by just a smidge, but 1,299 yards, 11 touchdowns, and five interceptions for him last year. So you do have a good experience backup option uh, if Brett Gabbert, knock on wood, my desk is made of wood, uh, were to go down again this season. So, hey, you got some pretty solid quarterbacks. Of course, Brett Gabbert's one of the best in the Mid-American Conference. Let's take a look at the running back room now. Uh, hey, Avion Smith was this team's leading rusher last year, 553 yards and six touchdowns. But in terms of what we have as running backs this year, well, Tyree Shelton is gone at 321 yards. Uh, and among running backs, led the team with three touchdowns last season. However, Kenny Tracy and Keon Mosey will be coming back. Uh, Tracy was the team's uh, technically fifth leading rusher, but according to um, rlads.com, I believe was in that top spot. Keon Mosey, not far behind him, was the leading rusher among running backs last season, 471 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and then Rashad Amos, uh, Amos, however you say that last name, I apologize, uh, is going to be transferring into this program. He's over from South Carolina. Who knows what kind of role he'll play in this running back room. Now, the wide receiver room. It's going to be very interesting this season as Mac Hippenhammer is going to be gone. Uh, when you talk about uh, Hippenhammer last year, was the team's leading receiver and was a very dynamic weapon overall for the Miami Red Hawk team. 769 yards and nine touchdowns last season. You're going to be missing him a ton. Jalen Walker has also gone 28 catches for 276 yards team's fourth leading receiver from last year. Now, you do get Miles Marshall back. He might be that primary option this season. 390 yards and two touchdowns last season. Was the only other Red Hawk behind, uh, besides Hip and Hammer last year that did have over uh, 300 re receiving yards. But other than that, it's going to be kind of a lot of feeling out, kind of a lot of, okay, what is going to work here in this wide receiver room? Well, Kevin Davis was a running back wide receiver combo last season was the team's fourth leading rusher, but also the team's fifth leading receiver as well. So he can do it both. Uh, they're going to need him more at the wide receiver position. Virgil Reginald uh, and Nate Morsh come back as well. We'll see what this wide receiver room is made of for Brett Gabbert and company. Now, speaking of tight ends, again, Nate Morsh is a converted tight end. Don't know if I mentioned that, but Matt Bajorson is going to be leaving this tight end room. However, your tight end receiving leader and Jack Coldiron is coming back 286 yards and a touchdown. Luke Bolden comes back as well. And on the offensive line, a couple really key guys lose by way of the transfer portal and Caleb Schaefer and Rusty Feth. However, Sam Vaughn, a really, really good offensive lineman, comes back. Reed Holsky and Colby Borders. And you do get a transfer over uh, from Kentucky and John Young. We'll see what kind of role he plays 
on this team as well. Now taking a look at the defensive side of the football for the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks. Name a guy that played on the defensive line for the Red Hawks last season. He probably comes back. Uh, some really, really uh, good players for this team last season. Austin Ertl uh, is going to be coming back. 35 tackles in the sack. However, your primary guy, don't know why I didn't list him first, was Brian Ugwu. 43 tackles, which was sixth on the team. Five sacks last season, which was second on the team, uh, only behind that of uh, Corey Suttle. 31 tackles uh, and six sacks last season. You also do have Caden Woolard, who had four sacks last season. He comes back, as well guys like Ty Wise, Kobe Hilton, and many others that return on the defensive line for the Red Hawks this season. When you take a look at the linebacking room, well, your leading tackler was a triple-digit tackler uh, in Ryan McWood. 135 tackles, half a sack, an interception, couple passes defended last season. So you're going to be missing him, but one of your leaders on this defense might overall be your best defensive player. Another linebacker hit triple digits last year. It's Matthew Salapek. 124 tackles, three and a half sacks for the team last season. Camden Rogers is also going to be a guy coming back. Uh, and then Dominic Nardone returns to this team as well. When you take a look at the defensive back room, you do lose a couple key pieces here as well. John Saunders led the way with 10 passes, defended two interceptions for this team last season. Uh, and then Javon Kimpson going to be gone as well. 31 tackles, four passes defended for him last season. But other than that, <laughs> there's a lot of nice talent in this secondary. Michael Dow was also almost, almost a triple digit tackler, 97 tackles, Two sacks, six passes defended for him last year. Jaquez Warren, Yashin McKee are going to be some of the leaders in the secondary along with Dowell. Uh, and then you got guys like Eli Blakely, Nolan Johnson, Ambie Caldwell, and Oscar McWood that are going to be coming back to this defensive secondary. So when I take a look overall at this Miami, Ohio Red Hawk team, let's see what the wide receiver room is made of. See if some of those guys can, of course, step up with Miles Marshall, in my opinion, being their leader. We'll see if Gabber and Vaughn are going to be able to stay healthy. And on the defensive side, yeah, there are a couple key contributors, especially McWood and Saunders that leave. Uh, however, speaking uh, entirely I really like what this Red Hawk team is made of. Your head coach is Chuck Martin. Your offensive coordinator is Pat Welsh. And your defensive coordinator is Bill Bretchen. As now we take a look at the Red Hawk football schedule for 2023. Any game you see that's going to be underlined is going to be a home game. Well, any game in italics or the slanted text will be a game the Red Hawks will be playing on the road. Any game in green is a game I think the Red Hawks are going to win easily. Any game in yellow is a back and forth 50-50 type game, but the Red Hawks will still be able to win. And red, of course, is a loss. So let's preview, predict, analyze Miami of Ohio football schedule this season. Hey, you got a battle of the Miamis here. Miami, Ohio goes on the road in Coral Gables to play Miami, Florida, and that's going to be a loss for this Red Hawk team. Look, I really like what the Red Hawks have this year. I really do. However, when you take a look at everything uh, surrounding th this game here, Miami just going to be the more talented roster. Yes, it was a disappointing season last year, but they have recouped, reloaded, got some key guys back, all new coordinators, hopefully make a difference for that team as well. And that could be one of the better units we see in the ACC this season. A lot of key transfers coming in. So uh, the Red Hawks going on the road, I do not think you're going to have much of a chance to win that game. However, on the road against UMass, I think they have a great, even a uh, really, really good chance and probably will end up walking away uh, with the win there in that game. However, do not underestimate UMass this year. That's a team that is adding a ton of power five transfers uh, and uh, even some former four stars coming out of high school, lots of former three stars. It's going to be a much more talented unit than what we're used to seeing out of the UMass Minutemen. Quarterback play could let them down. They are a much improved team though uh so watch out for that one definitely let's take a look now at the cincinnati bearcats coming up next on the red hawk schedule that is a road game for this red hawk team and even though cincinnati loses their head coach in luke fickle loses a lot of key talent that made them so good over the past couple of seasons including a former red hawk over there in Ivan Pace, who had a really good season for that team last year. And yeah, Cincinnati is definitely going to be struggling in that Big 12 conference this season. Uh, again, it's a step above competition of what they were playing in the American Athletic. However, I still think this is going to be a tough game for the Red Hawks to win. I think Cincinnati is still going to play a really good brand of defense. They're going to make this one tough uh, for Miami of Ohio to walk away with the win. And I think Cincinnati is going to be able to get it done uh, there at home. So the Red Hawks start out two and two uh, because you should be able to beat Delaware State. That's a program 
Not a very good one at that, in my opinion, out of the FCS ranks. So then you get into conference play, and you do have a very manageable one at the start. You got to go on the road against Kent State, and that's a Golden Flashes team that, well, is probably going to end up struggling here in 2023. It is a unit as we take a look at what they lost. Pretty much everyone, quarterback, running back, lots of wide receivers, some really key pieces on defense. It's just a team that uh, loses a ton of talent that is nearly impossible to get back through the portal with what, of course, Kent State uh, is known for, kind of kind of uh, the brand, the budget, everything like that. So uh, Kent State, I just don't think, recouped uh, enough talent. Not to say that there's not good talent on that team, because I think there are some pretty solid pieces. It's just not as talented of a team as it has been in years past. And it could be why they struggle in the Mid-American Conference this season. You got a home game against Bowling Green coming up next. And hey, the Falcons, they're going to be a very tough out for anyone in the Mid-American Conference this season. That's a team that's going to fight, that's going to compete. And they got some really good football players on it. However, overall, offensively, defensively, there is a lot of improvement that still needs to be made. Even though they did make a bowl game last year, they left a couple wins on the uh the table but improvement is still necessary and until improvement is seen i think brett gabber is going to be lighting up this falcon defense that was not very good last season so miami of ohio walks away with a win in that one this road game against western michigan i've gone back and forth on because what i've always thought about this team is even though even though western michigan did lose a ton of talent to the uh the transfer portal some really really good weapons offensively some good players defensively on the offensive line are all gone there as well i still think it's going to be a competitive team now may they get uh, six wins can they make a bowl game i think yes it's a matter of not of if they get there that i think it's going to be the interesting thing to watch out for so when i take a look at this western michigan team i see a very competitive team i see a team that's going to compete that's going to play a really good brand of football but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Brett Gabber is going to outshine here, outperform this Western Michigan defense, and that will be a win uh, for Miami of Ohio. Then you get to this game against Toledo, and I think Miami, Ohio is riding a little bit of a hot streak here. Now, there are very few teams that I think are going to be able to slow down both Toledo's offense uh, and be able to get through this Toledo defense. A lot of returning production, a lot of really good football players, but Daquan Finn, Brett Gabbert, who that's a quarterback battle I want to see. And even though Daquan Finn may be the best quarterback in this conference, and yeah, there are a little bit of a depth questions in the wide receiver for this Red Hawks program, I do think they pull off the upset win here. Again, I needed a second loss for Toledo. It just happened to work out that Miami was that team uh, that I thought could end up beating them. And I think Brett Gabbard, if he plays really, really well, that's a game that very well could go the way of Miami of Ohio and they get home field advantage, which always helps there as well. So in a Mac style upset, I do have Miami uh, of Ohio winning that game. Now Miami, Ohio uh, goes back in state to Athens to take on the Ohio Bobcats. Uh, and I do think the win streak is going to end here uh, for the same reasons of the Toledo applied to this Ohio game. Only I do have them losing really good quarterback in Rourke, some really good uh, skill position players there as well. Pretty good pieces on defense. Ohio is going to be one of the better teams out of the Mac this season. So I do think that is a loss for Miami of Ohio, but you get your bye week. I think you'll bounce back nicely with a win over Akron, a team that's towards the bottom of the ranks in the mid American conference. So I think that'll be a pretty solid win for Miami of Ohio, and then you got this game against Buffalo. This is going to be a very interesting game, uh, but the deciding factor for me is what this Buffalo defense has. There are too many playmakers, too many key, uh, really good players coming back to this defense, uh, and that is going to lead me to believe that the, the Buffalo Bulls are going to be able to beat the Red Hawks there in Week 12. However, Week 13 rolls around, final game of the season. It's on the road against Ball State. And uh, Ball State could be another team that really struggles to put up some wins th this season. It it's a team that uh, I just don't think matches up, especially when you compare the two offenses well. Uh, I, I think M Miami of Ohio definitely has the better quarterback and even a lot of solid pieces on defense to be able to slow down what the Cardinals are going to be able to throw at you. So the Red Hawks win that game, which leads me to a record of 8-4, and 7-5 and five I could easily see as well. Maybe they lose to Toledo, lose to Western Michigan. This is going to be another solid football team. Again, if it can stay healthy, knock on wood. Uh, but I got Miami of Ohio being a really solid team out of the Mid-American Conference this year. That's going to do it uh, for my thoughts on the Red Hawks. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. And hey, 
Always remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See you guys in the next video.